What's up everyone, this is Mars Man here, and welcome to Mars Man Gaming. In this video is our second edition of Mars Man News, where we break down the biggest topics of the, of the week for gaming. And like I always do, I have to have the Mars Man crew along with me, and to my left is Haki. What's going on guys? And to my right is Langella Kill. What's up everybody? Now, just like we've done last week, we try to break down the biggest topics um, and generally, as I said before, news always changes. So as we make these videos, as we do our filmings, there's always gonna be something that happens like right at the very moment. So if there's any updates, we'll probably have to include that on the next week's video. Um, like for instance, as the you know biggest news that dropped today was the uh, PlayStation State of Play. And we'll probably have to have a bigger video that just discusses the key things. And I'm also making a individual State of Play reaction video uh, so don't worry. Obviously, we already know that the, <laughs> it is a lot of news to cover and just the state of play itself. But today we are covering the biggest news that happened uh, this 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 past week, and I want to just jump right into it. Uh, generally, what we do on these videos is the first half of this is going to focus on the big news topics, and the last portion is going to be based on our Discord questions that are sent to us by our Discord feed. Those people are the ones that subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as join us on Twitter and on Discord. So if you want to be uh, one of those people that include questions that will be shown in these videos, please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe to this video and join us on Discord. And that is located in the description below. But let's just jump right into the news. Really new hot topic that everyone's talking about. CD Projekt Red had got a major bump in sales with a new re-release version of Cyberpunk on the next gen consoles. Uh, so what we saw was when Cyberpunk came out, a lot of people were obviously we saw how horrible that launch was, where basically it was unplayable on the last gen consoles like PlayStation 4 was literally bugged to death. Xbox uh, players basically I saw people like cars floating in the air, people just disappearing in the water and things like that. And it got really gross. Um, but then when CC Project Red had released the re-release version on next gen consoles, there was a lot of these bugs that were fixed and obviously people were able to jump back into the game. Um, now, what they did show us was that basically old consoles can't really play this game, right? There's too much stuff going on for this to work. And that was kind of the, one of the biggest faults about this, this game was they tried to prioritize using old consoles when in reality, they should have just kept making it just for next gen stuff. So what we found was that firstly, CEO Adam Kaczynski had basically stated that this new re-release of the game had given CD Projekt Red the incentive to now invest more money into Cyberpunk because it shows that they are getting a better reception uh, because of the fact that they actually are fixing a lot of the bugs that came with the game as well as trying to address the problems. And obviously, CD Projekt Red is well known for Witcher, for the Witcher series and they gained their fame based off of it and obviously uh, Cyberpunk had damaged that. Um, and there's also going to be a lot more updates that come along with the game. There's going to be a new DLC that apparently that will be added not too long in the future. So the big question I have is, do you think Cyberpunk has a chance to bounce back in popularity? Because we've seen games that have matched this before, where Master Halo Master Chief Collection had a horrifying launch. We've seen Destiny start off mo the one of the most boring games I think I've ever seen. Sea of Thieves started out with nothing to do, and as time progressed, the population of these games have gotten up and up. So I just want to see, do you think Cyberpunk has a chance to bounce back in that popularity? And I want to start off the discussion with Haki. What do you think? Yeah, so I, I think uh, the game in the beginning had so much potential. Um, there really wasn't a game out there that was like it. Um, and it was just so, so bad on launch. Just like you were saying, I mean, you hit it right on the on the head. Uh, it was just uh, so glitchy um, and it was, it was unplayable. Even after they put out that first update, it was unplayable. And again, this game had an unbelievable amount uh, of potential. I know you had um, streamed, uh, I think it was a, probably a month or two ago, a, a cyberpunk uh, stream and it, it looked great, you know, um, after that update, but uh, it should have never came out, like you said, for, that old gen, it should have, unfortunately, it got delayed a bunch. They should have just kept it out. They should, they should have never brought it out for old gen. It should have been a new gen game. And people would have been pissed until it actually came out and it was a fantastic game. But they messed it up, brought it out early. Um, but I think it can make a comeback. The story is very different. 
the gunplay is very different. Uh, I like it. I haven't played it since, but uh, the story's there. And once it actually comes out, once I beat Elden Ring and a few other games, I'll probably give it a try. Yeah, so Langelica, what do you think? Um, well, you know, we've talked about this a lot of times that this CD Project Red um, started off as kind of one of the more iconic game developers coming from the Witcher stuff. Um, and this really brought them down multiple notches. Um, and they have no one to blame but themselves. Um, and, you know, the, the issue, you know, that and it's kind of sent a message to the rest of the gaming industry. If the game is not ready, delay it. And, uh, you know, you'll get backlash for delaying it, but a delayed game is going to be way better than a rushed game. Um, no question about it. And first impressions are huge, right? So, like, you know, every time you bring up, uh, you know, this game, Cyberpunk, you know, everyone cringes a little bit because they're just thinking about the release um, and not thinking about the update that uh, fixed a lot of bugs, um, which is good. But I do think where it will really get popularity, similar to Halo, season three pass is the content drop um so when they come in with that content drop i do think because the uniqueness of the game and the environment um i do think that could be a bounce back in popularity but it just the longer you get away from the the first release the longer it takes to get those um you know content drops the harder it is going to be to make that bounce back you'll get a bounce back but how big of a bounce back if it's the longer you wait it won't be that much because new games will come out yeah, no, listen, I think I did enjoy my time playing uh, Cyberpunk. Now, granted, I didn't get as many bugs as some other people did, so I completely understand where a lot of people are coming from and saying, no, I don't trust this game to really ever be successful. I get that feeling, but I do agree with you both. I think that there is a chance for this game to mount a comeback uh, per, per se, not, not to the same level of, as the hype that went behind the game itself. I think people, you know, people fall into the issue of overhyping games way too early and before it actually is released and we see that count uh, countless times where games are over the top in their hype and then all of a sudden they don't meet that hype then uh, then everyone just says it's the garbage game this game had one of the worst launches i think i've ever seen a game have before it's, it's like historic you know people who are game developers are really citing cyberpunk as being an, an example of what not to do in the gaming industry like being don't do what they did do not do what cyberpunk did because you'll lose everybody. And I think that they have a chance of coming back. I've seen games do before. I've seen a game like No Man's Sky who that didn't even have a combat system put into place that was just literally a simulator of you watching aliens fly around, literally change its framework of the game to now becoming a popular game on Steam as well as other places. So I've seen it happen. I think Cyberpunk has the chance of being popular again, but not to the same level that everyone's hyping it to be. Uh, let's go to the next story here. So. Recently, we saw a new teaser of Star Wars Fallen Order 2, which was announced to be coming in 2023. Um, now, this is one of EA's most profitable games at the moment. One of the best, in my opinion, one of the best and most functional games, complete games at the moment. Um, and ge generally, when you look at EA games that come out with Star Wars, uh, you know, Star Wars lore, Star Wars based stories, they've been horrible. Like, I mean, like Star Wars Battlefront, uh, Star Wars Battlefront series, one and two have been failures because when you really look at them now, Star Wars Battlefront 2 has made a comeback. Um, they were horrifying and they they got popular later on. Um, but the way they started on both those games, a lot of people just lost hope in it. And Star Wars Fallen Order was one of those mixed bags because it was supposed to be a game about Boba Fett. And then they changed, they scrapped the entire story, the project died, and then they had to redo it. And a lot of people are saying, oh, this is going to be a horrible game. But Fallen Order 1 was a hit. And I think that the, the second game, I honestly was hyped playing the first one, especially the ending. And I'm not going to ruin it for anybody because it's a great ending. Um, but the second game continues the story, adds more Inquisitors, and even has references to characters from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. So I think it does bring some excitement to that second installment because of how successful it was. So are you excited for Fallen Order 2? And yeah, obviously not all of us have played it. I played it, but I know that. What do you want to see from this game? If just as a Star Wars fan, because we're all fans of Star Wars here, and what do you think makes a good Star Wars game? Right? I kind of those are some three big questions thrown at you. But for any all you guys here, are you excited for Fallen Order Two? I, I know I am. And so that that's an easy easy yes for me. But uh, Langella, I'll go with you first. Are you excited? And then I'll ask the second question to everybody. Are you excited for this game? I mean, I don't see why not people wouldn't be excited. This is probably the most complete um, Star Wars game uh, that they've come out with. Um, 
since Knights of the Republic or the old Battle uh, Front games. Um, so yeah, and I do think part of it is because this is the hardest game for EA to put its you know grubby fingers on uh, with all the microtransactions. Like they can't do it in this one, and all of a sudden people enjoy that more. Um, so it's it's a game that they can't really get too grubby about and try to rape everyone's wallets. So it ends up being a story game and it's a well-written story game and it makes it feel Star Wars like. Um, so that's probably the best thing going for it. And it was a really successful first one. I do caution people because sequels usually are not as good as the original. And that's not saying that they can't do it. You've seen at times, but for the most part, it's hard for sequels to match the original game hype. Um, Hopefully it does. Um, I, you know me, I said on the last video, I am a fan of good story games, good campaigns. Um, so if they do a similar job what they did the first time, I think it'll be another big hit um, for EA. And you'll see, uh, hopefully they keep their microtransactions out of this one like they did the first one. Yeah, I'll actually add on to that for you, Angelica, because I know hockey, you didn't get that into playing forward, so I, it's hard for you to kind of add on to like, what do you want to see from the game? Just because you haven't really seen the, you haven't got to play the first one. Uh, but I know, Langelico, you, you had some experience, especially seeing a lot of the components. What do you want to see, just quickly, what do you want to see from this second installment? What, what would it make it a successful installment, a second one? Yeah, I mean, uh, similar structure. I just don't, I, I don't know how they could add, if they could add a multiplayer aspect. Um, it would probably be kind of like a Jedi versus Inquisitor type thing. Um, that's the only way I could see them doing it in this style, in this certain aspect. Um, or a co-op campaign would be really cool. But again, it depends on how the story is written, right? Because in the first one, you couldn't really do that. Um, so in the second one, do they introduce a second main character that can go along with you? I do think that would add uh, another flavor to this game. And it would be very enjoyable that, hey, you know, me and you could play or me and Haki or you and Haki. And um, I think it'd be an enjoyable experience. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and Hucky, I'm going to bring this uh, next question to you, and this is a different one. What's a new Star Wars game that you want to see? Because we're all Star Wars fans here, and you didn't get to play Fallen Order uh, the first one. I'm sure you'll, you'll probably test it out at some point because it kind of has similar combat styles to like Elden Ring and other ones that like that. They're more slower and more based on countering and things like that. So I'm sure you'll get to play it at some point. But what's a new Star Wars game that you would want to see uh, or be intrigued about? Like, I feel like that's something that a lot of people always, you know, are debating. Like, what's a Star Wars game that I feel like people want to see or something that's different, right? So what do you want? If you were if you were leader of EA and hopefully they hire you to be the head of EA at some point, what's a Star Wars, what's a Star Wars game that you would put in production right now? So uh, that's a good question. So real quick, I, I did play um, like the Forced Unleashed games mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, and I thought those games were lit. Um, I kind of just, for the last probably four or five years just been on like the first person shooter vibe obviously i'm getting back to it so i'm definitely i definitely think i'm going to pick up the first fall in order and then uh try this one out because it did look pretty cool um but i mean if i was the head of ea um and i had the correct writers i would want to see uh like before the like way 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 before the empire way before like uh a darth vader like you know thousands of years before darth vader i forgot um what sith lord was in it, charge back then but it, it was kind of you're thinking like the the old republic like because they they yeah, have like that yeah. the era known as the old republic exactly so if you, they can bring some type of old republic back and really bring um characters out from like the books that they have written i think that would be pretty cool yeah i think adding to that lord i know that um that the the, the the fallen order basically remake is in production and it's slated for playstation 5 which is a great story, and, but I, I do agree with you. Having like another component that goes along with the lore of Star Wars and adding to that, because I know that they're in development or they're in concepts of making a new trilogy that's based on the uh, the old Republic era. Um, and I think having a game where you're playing as in, in like a very similar aspect to what Fallen Order is like, I think that would be a cool thing in my eyes. So I I agree with you guys, all, uh, all of you guys. Fallen Order Two, I think I'm I'm excited for. I, I can't wait to play it. I was a big fan of the first one. I thought it was challenging and i also thought it was cool because it was a brand new story with no one we really knew from it uh and they kind of just created a character and i they rolled it i kind of was a little intrigued with the the guy uh he i think he's from i forgot which, which famous tv show but he's he's got an interesting character on the show but they brought him in and i was like ah, i don't know about this with this dude i forget his name um but you know he 
he kicked he kicked ass. He was a great. He did very well, uh, good job in that. Um, let's jump to the next story, and this is a big one. It hits hits us all in the feels a little. The head of the of Halo Infinite's multiplayer design, Jerry Hook, has left Halo Infinite, and basically. What happened recently, Jerry Jerry Hook had stated on Twitter that he is stepping away from gaming for some time. And, you know, he has been a part of Xbox's community, been a part of their livelihood since 2003. He was basically a uh, producer. He was working on uh, Xbox Live Commerce and the account since 2003. And then he was a producer at 3 for 3, working on Halo 4 and Halo 5. Um... And basically, uh, he was actually, when you're looking at Halo Infinite and what he was really designed to do, he was one of the key people that switched the game from being a, a box product to being a live service game. And he was leading the charge on the store, leading the charge in the battle pass systems. Um, and, you know, this news has gotten some mixed reviews, right? There's been some people that are stating some Halo fans saying, hey, this is bad news bears because this shows that everyone's leaving three for three. It's a dying ship, all that stuff, because they always usually like to say those type of things when people are leaving. Um, and there's always going to be a lot of uh, people in part of game developers when they, they leave, usually after the game does release. But you can also understand that there is some concern there. Um, but like I said, I, I personally think this, you know, in my opinion, and this is, uh, this is my aspect, I think this is honestly a good thing. Um, I kind of mentioned this in my Is Halo Dying video not too long ago that Jerry Hook was uh, the leader of this whole debacle of switching the game from being the box product, which we've all known and loved. We're all used to at this point to being a live service, which essentially means that we aren't done with the game right away. We're going to be finished with the game way down the line type of idea. And I thought this was a bad, bad thing that 3 for 3 did. And he was part of that problem. And honestly, I was not upset when he walked away. Now, granted, if it has something to do with health reasons, I'm not sitting here like, oh, go I, if listen, best to you, Jerry. But at the end of the day, he's gone. And the other thing that I kind of want to remind a lot of people on, I feel like maybe I'm ranting a little bit here, but you know, usually when people leave, if they're so good, usually they get hired by another company right away. Usually they get swept up, they get picked up. Like for instance, a lot of the key people from Halo Infinite, like that build up to the game, they had these multiplayer key players, uh, part of the Halo Infinite uh, staff. And uh, along the multiplayer videos that they were publishing last year's E3 and stuff like that, they were talking about how Halo's not going to be put, putting you behind a paywall and you can unlock all these uh, weapons uh, and, and armors and customizations if they're on the level of reach and how they're customizable. And every one of those people, it feels like The Walking Dead, where you can just see them all been wiped out. They're not part of the company anymore because like the development of this game was, was shaky, but everything that they stated was utterly a lie. Because a lot of the things they said, like there's no, there's no money wall. You have to pay for certain armors. That's a lie. There is no things that you can unlock it without the battle pass. Well, that's a lie, right? There's a lot of things that they stated that were lies. And Jerry Hook was just one of those fatalities that fell along the way. Because of all those people who had left, only one of them has a job somewhere else. And I think that was the map designer. Because honestly, that person does have a lot of talent. Because the maps are all pretty good, right? He left to go work with Dr. Disrespect's new company, which good, good luck to you on that one. But everyone else walked away with no job in their hands. So in my opinion, I don't necessarily think this is the most negative thing for 3 for 3. I think honestly, they kind of need to kind of clear house a little bit, allow Joseph Staden, who is the OG, who is a guy who I think is pushing Halo in the right direction, to hire someone that is trusted to actually keep consistent with what they state, what they say, rather than just lie and just kind of dodge around the truth. Now, I kind of want to get your opinion because I, I did my TED talk of the day. Um, do you think that this is a major negative for 3 for 3 or should this be considered a positive for the future of Halo Infinite? And I want to start off with Hockey first. Do you think this is a major negative or do you think this is more of a positive for Halo Infinite? Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll start off by saying, you know, the... The guy worked for uh, Microsoft for almost two decades, right? He was probably uh, with Halo for a decade, right? Since Halo 4, so maybe even more than a decade. Um, so he, he put in his time. He, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not working for 343 or anything like that. I'm sure he brought in uh, a ton of great ideas, and we saw those ideas throughout all the games. Now, the live, the live um, 
uh, service live, live service, service game. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with the live service game as long as the core of the game when you release it is good and playable, and it's not like ha- it's not like half of the core, and then you put the other half in, and then you start like the live service game is okay if it's like fully made, and then you add on to it to make it better. Um, I don't think Halo Infinite was truly a hundred percent ready to go, you know. Um, and the the store the microtransactions, I know Angelic Hill uh, harps on it a lot. It was horrible. I mean, I'm not spending, I'm not going to spend the same amount of money in a week buying things than I did on the entire game. You know, like that's just so outrageous to me. So I think it is. You know, he did his time. You know two decades with the company, one decade with Halo. Like, I think it's good that he left. Uh, let's get some new ideas in here. Let's get some, you know, positive uh, outlook forward and, and just move on. So I, I think it's uh, I think it's positive. So Angelical, me and you have a lot of debates on these, uh, these leavings, these walking away. There's been a lot of walking going on recently. So um, what do you think about this? Was this negative or was this positive? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, on this show, I have to be the uh, the more harsher person on the Halo stuff besides Hockey and, and Mars Man. Um, I think there's a positive and a negative aspect to it. I think I agree with you guys on this. I do think it's time for new blood at 343. Um, and, you know, he is one of those people who and, and we kind of saw this coming, right? When Halo delayed um, almost a year. Uh, you knew that some heads were going to roll because Microsoft, no doubt, Phil Spencer wanted to put this game out with the new console. Um, And because that was a last minute change, that really um, left Xbox with no game release uh, with the new system. Um, So it really changed those things. And you knew things were bad because they had to put new leadership in practically in the middle of development. Um, So we knew heads were going to roll and we did see heads roll. And I feel like this is kind of like the ending of that, uh, bringing in new blood because, like you said, they put out a game after a delay that still wasn't completed. Um, so, again, whose fault is that? You know, those are people that, and Microsoft still has a hand in it too because they okayed uh, this game going to a live service, right? Microsoft, if they were not okay with Halo going to a live service game, uh, they would tell them, no, it's, it's not going to go that way. Um, so they definitely deserve their hand in it. But I don't see the sour grapes that people losing their minds that, hey, you know, Halo's going to go in the wrong direction. Halo was in the wrong direction. You understand? Like, they're trying to clean up Halo. So, again, you know, the, the best part of Infinite is its core gameplay. But they have been behind the eight ball for a long time. I mean, like, everyone's talking about, like, Season 3 is practically the Halo's finished product. Right? So, like... Think about when the game released and we got to wait till the season three pass for what people are calling the completion of the Halo Infinite game. That's crazy. That's crazy. And again, those transactions we talk about, again, I can see you paying $1, $2, $5 for stuff, but seeing $10 or $12 in that store for like three pieces is insane to me. It's insane. You can do a lot better things with $12 than some of the stuff they put in that store. Um, the only bad thing about it is you see all these people leaving and you're a live service game. It's hard to put together a team that fast that you can continue to be a live service game. That's the only negative I see on that. But for the most part, it's positive. Yeah, I mean, like, I listen, I can sound like an ultra negative when I keep bashing on all these people leaving. But at the end of the day, and I think Jill Kill, you, you kind of mentioned it. You know, Halo, people complain that Halo has been dying for a while, right? They said that it's been downgrading, the popularity has been going down and everything. Well, a lot of these people have been working on the past games that you didn't like. So you're yeah. basically having them clean house and they're getting they're going to replace them with people that will do what's right by the community yeah, because they need to. Yeah, Statham to make yeah. these decisions. Yeah, Joseph so, Statham is going to be the guy them. that's going to be making these decisions. And I trust him way more than I trust Chris Lee, than I do Jerry Hook, or any of these other guys who were there that basically were stealing money from our wallets. So I think at the end of the day, what they need to do is Joseph Staten needs to go back into his old phone book and start bringing back some of the talent that had left Bungie back when they they, they left Halo and, and, and Activision and, and all that stuff. Bring back some of that old blood that was from the Halo 2 and Halo 3 days because a lot of them are still on the market. And you know they're, they're still yeah. there, they're just not working. 
right? Next, um, next thing they need to do is launch whoever okayed the Paramount Plus. They need to launch them to the sun. Launch them to the sun. One thing, the one thing I'll say that's positive. One thing I'll say that's positive, and I thought this is, and I'll just end this note here because we're talking a lot about this topic. But (laughs) in certain infinity is basically the the head of a certain infinity, the creator of it was the guy who created the multiplayer of Halo Two. He helped basically lead the way Halo Two multiplayer was. And certain infinity is now basically merging with Three Four Three to help them build. The next era of like multiplayer games are the ones creating the battle royale for a three for, for Halo Infinite. So you're getting Joseph Staten, who is a Halo OG. The the I forgot the name of the guy who's cre- who's the head of Certain Infinity. He's a Halo OG. You're getting old Halo vets back into the fray, and that only gives me confidence that they at least can bring us a product that is remembrance of the old games. Because back when there was rumors that the halo was going to drift into a hero shooter where i would have just thrown myself off a bridge and thank god for joseph staten is showing up when he did and said let's scrap all that crap and let's just stick to the basics of what makes halo what it is and that's what we got with halo they threw all the crap out that's why there's so much less content because all the years they spent making garbage hero shooter stuff and then in comes joseph staten like this is trash and we need yeah. to clean up this crap right now. And he basically it, says, "If that rumor is true, yeah, if that's true, that it makes perfect sense." They would have they said, the Halo because they, they said that they, this current build of Halo was only two years in development. The game has been in development technically for six years. So in that four years, before Joseph Staten was arrived, that this was must have been the most garbage thing we probably ever were going to yeah. see. And he showed up and was like, "We need to get rid of this stuff and throw it into the sun so no one ever sees it again." And I need to bring us back to what made Halo what it is, and bring back the Halo Three mechanics. And let's just let's just add new abilities. Let's just add b- maps and l- condense the guns to make it simple. And let's just stick with it. And that's what Halo Infinite feels like. And I- even that being the case, it still feels like a fresh breath, uh, 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 like a feeling of uh, you know fresh air on the atmosphere because it's different. It's back to the classics. It's not perfect, but it's close enough to what we everyone wanted when it comes to gameplay and mechanic. Now just add a content and we're all good. Um let's just jump to the next topic because let's just, we're talking about throwing stuff away in dumpsters. One thing that needs to go in the dumpster is Battlefield 2042. Um because they are ceasing development of Hazard Zone. Now Hazard Zone, if you don't know everybody, is basically the dumb, unfun version of Call of Duty Warzone. It is the basically the epitome of a wasted effort to do anything fun where they basically feels like they didn't put any any investment at all they didn't do i didn't even think of any fun components that they could add it was just entirely bs and it was way for them to earn money from you all you all you did in this game mode was play the game mode for about an hour long earn cash to buy weapons that you can't even use to to, to get customizations in the actual main part of the game it's only isolated to hazard zone and essentially you're just bored out of your mind for the entire freaking time now battlefield 2042 is by all means a dumpster fire we played it on stream a few times i had some funny glitchy clips don't get me wrong i have to i'll remember those forever um but right now battlefield 5 which is the world war 2 version has more players playing it than battlefield 2042 right just think about that for a minute and I honestly, I want to see EA get purchased by somebody like Disney or NBC, and I want whoever the new leader of that company to just throw whoever and said, let's go hero shooters and just throw them out the freaking window because they need to revamp dice. They need to give it to respawn and just let them do what they want with it because this, whatever this is, Battlefield 242 is hot trash. Um, and my opinion is, and I'll ask you guys here. I think is I think this game's dead. And I'm gonna ask you guys what you think. And if you were playing Miracle Doctor, right? And you were like I said, Haki Lajuka. If you're the head of EA, because it feels like EA's been like the the ones that have been dealing with making trash for so long. If you're the head of EA, how the hell would you revive this series? And um, I'll get my quick opinion here bring back battlefield bad company to at least bring fans some sort of enjoyment of some classic battlefield type of things with classes and i think you'll get at least some people happy with that type of stuff Bring just put old maps and you don't even have to because you know ea is known for just 
copy and pasting everything and we see it with madden all the time you know what copy and paste some real games like bad, bad company or the old battlefield 4 game just copy and paste it and i'd be okay with it because those games were good and you're copying and pasting good games and just updating them that's okay but they just copy and paste crappy games so one hockey do you think this this game is dead and if you were to revive it what would you do yeah so i'm naming this like the horrible hype game of probably the decade this game was unbelievably hyped like the commercial where the guy's like jumping out he jumps off the cliff and the, and the plane comes down the helicopter comes down i was so hyped for this game um i spent more money than than regularly than, than i would i bought the gold pass or whatever which was eighty dollars or eighty five dollars you know um they were it, charging 120 so, yeah, Marzan so, took the 120. I, I, I took yeah i took the i took the fat yeah. the fat l and i just took yeah. the 120. Yeah, so you took the 120. I did the one, the tier below that, still 85, 90 bucks. Um, I mean, the game doesn't have a story mode, and it was just, I don't know why I didn't have a terrible time in the beta or at least the beginning of the game. I know PS5 players were having a horrible time, um, but just as the game went on, it just got worse and worse. Um, it was very, very boring, and just seeing like tanks and other vehicles just climb up buildings was just the most outrageous thing i think i've ever seen in a video game like it, it didn't even look like a glitch it, they were just traveling up the building you know it was it was ridiculous uh the game to me is dead um if i was ahead of ea i would maybe just focus on the next battlefield hopefully they get bought out you know like it's that bad the best Battlefield so far in the last, you know, decade or so has been Battlefield 4. Um, if they need to, like you said, copy and paste Battlefield 4, um, they should do that because this, this is just so bad. This was like on the, this was on like the level of Cyberpunk, but just no turning back. Yeah. No, and uh, I, I honestly, it's difficult to think about Battlefields are my favorite war games out there, and they just. Yeah. It's the good looks like the god look what they did to my boy. I don't even know what to say. Legella kill is it dead? I think I kind of know your answer. And if you were the head of EA, what would you do? Yeah, it's dead. Um, that 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 guy's dead and rotted. Uh, there's no bringing that back. That uh, I actually think it was hard to think of a worse uh release than Cyberpunk. And I, in my opinion, I feel that Battlefield probably matched it and may have exceeded cyberpunk's awful um release because that thing's dead on arrival cyberpunk i do think can save itself a little bit it'll never reach the potential that it was hyped up to be but battlefield is dead on arrival and uh you know hockey didn't experience those glitches but when me and mars Bam played just those couple hours uh, that we had um i'll tell you my experience i got stuck in the respawn glitch um where it's a 20 minute match and I died like in like the first two minutes and I couldn't be revived. And I had to sit there in a 20 minute match and watch everybody play. Um, you couldn't quit. You couldn't like, and that was my first, I think first or second game. And I was like, this is the craziest glitch I've ever seen. Um, and there's just many of them when it comes to the vehicles, the hit markers, the best thing that they can do if I was in charge of EA, um, number one, I think dice is not the same dice. Uh, it's not the same dice that made the other Battlefield games. I know it's hard for some people to grasp. Everyone was expecting, okay, yeah, you know what? The beta sucks. Um, they'll do what they did with all the other Battlefields, right? Where the, the release is not great, but they'll fix it, and it'll be a great Battlefield game. Um, that did not happen this time. No. And to me, I would give that IP up to somebody else um, if I'm ahead of EA. And the number one priority is to make it feel like a Battlefield game again. Right? That's the big thing is making it. They're not playing Battlefield to play Call of Duty Warzone, right? They'll go play Call of Duty Warzone if they want to play Call of Duty. Um, you're special and you're unique because you feel like a different game. And too many times uh, gaming companies try to copy each other. Um, at times it works, but a lot of times it doesn't because you change your identity as a game, which would make people love you in the beginning. So people are not picking up Battlefield to play Call of Duty. They'll play Call of Duty for that, right? And it was similar to when Halo 4 came out. They didn't pick up Halo 4 to play Call of Duty. 
if they want to play Call of Duty, they'll play Call of Duty, right? Stick to your identity. Yeah, no, I agree, guys. I agree. It's kind of sad to see what happens to, to my boy. But let's jump into a Nintendo stories, and I'm actually going to combine these together. Nintendo had a very interesting conference. You know, Nintendo and Sony, they are like the kings. We, me and Angelica, were talking about this. They're the kings of just dropping conferences out of the blue. They just like, you know what? Tomorrow, 12 o'clock, let's do a conference. Let's just yeah. let's talk about the games of the next year. Like, they just randomly throw these conferences out there without really any hype. They just straight up throw them out there and they expect everyone because everyone's going to like me, the joke, everyone's going to start jumping at the, at the at the at the bit to go watch some of these new games coming out. And Nintendo's infamous for doing this. Um, so Nintendo came out with a lot of new games that were that they discussed. One of the cool little drops they had just recently um, was going to be Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Um, and I'm just going to do a quick little run through what they had. I think what Nintendo does very well is they always make some sort of an adaption to the games. Like, you know, I never see Nintendo ever just copy and paste the same game directly. Now, they do sometimes do some fancy things where they do a deluxe edition. Like, they add some stuff to something to make it bigger, like a DLC pack, because they just don't want to keep making brand new games like Barrier Cart. They got to make a deluxe plus edition deluxe gold edition like things like that to just keep adding stuff to it but they usually when they're making a new installment even if a lot of the same components are there they do make some adjustments to make it feel different and pokemon scarlet and violet i can't even tell you what a generation we're on right now because there's been so many but they have brand new pokemon like i i me me and angelica we used to collect pokemon like you know cards back in the day we used to have pokemon figurines when we were younger um and i can tell you verbatim a lot of different Pokemon's names because I used to memorize them. I, used to buy, I, I, I do more of that. I had more Pokemon. I had almost every Pokemon game out there. And I used to play them. But so this new Pokemon game, Scarlet and Violet, um, basically is dropping November 18, 2022. So coming out this year is a big open release for them on the Switch. And, uh, you know, they have the Grass Cat, Water Duck, and a Fire Lizard. I get, it's hard to really tell what the hell he is, but he's a Fire Lizard, I think. Um, one of the, It looks like an open world Pokemon game kind of following in some of the mindsets that a lot of nintendo games are following in open world games that they're really just diving into now i'm following after the breath of the wild feeling and uh you know it's an open world pokemon game you battle against trainers and you're actually gonna have the ability to play four player co-op which is a very different component that pokemon never had before bring in more people to play and hey maybe you know we might have to play that on stream and play hockey with angelica we're gonna play pokemon and start kicking some yeah, ass against like trainers um, but basically I, I kind of looked at that and I was like, that's pretty interesting to see. Other game they announced was Sonic Frontiers, which is an open world, because you know we got the open world now, open world Sonic game. And this this world looks pretty massive and it looks pretty pretty legit. A lot of the graphics look pretty solid. It's running 4K, which is a good thing to see. Um, it kind of gives me a lot of Mario Odyssey vibes when I was watching it. Um, but it looks pretty early in development. I, it has to come out next year. This game did not look ready to just be dropped right away because it looked like a giant world, but not a lot to do. And they need to follow in what Odyssey did and give you stuff to do. And they need to do that ASAP if this game was coming out this year. I don't think it is. They did not even give you much of anything to, to go off of. I think that needs to come out next year, but two legendary titles. We have Sonic returning in open world, Pokemon returning in open world, I kind of want to ask you guys, which of these two games intrigues you the most? And what do you think it needs to be? What do you think it needs to have to be good? So, Langella Kill, I want to ask you first, which of the two games do you find the most interesting? And what does it need to have to be a good game? Uh, Pokemon. Um, I'll go with Pokemon, even though I can't even tell you what those Pokemon are, their names. Um, but Nintendo usually doesn't make any bad Pokemon games. Um, they may not be great games. But they're never really bad ones. There have been some bad Sonic games, um, so that one oh, brings them oh, oh, yeah, danger happy. to, oh, to yeah. it. But uh, it's the Pokemon one. Pokemon open world and co-op uh, play is very intriguing to me. Uh, again, I think you know open world is a interesting flavor that a lot of game companies trying to dip their feet in, and Nintendo seems like they're taking a dive in. Uh, putting out some of their big guns in open world atmospheres. And I think, you know, the thing about open worlds, when you can customize and you can play with others, um, I do think, you know, it has the, it creates potential for a game that, that can be ex ex exceptionally high. And I do think Pokemon, who is very linear in its, its normal games, um, if you can open that up, 
um, like a real Pokemon game, not the one where you're just trying to capture Pokemon, which I know a lot of people had fun, but you're just throwing around Pokeballs and capturing. Um, but if you can actually play and you get badges and you fight trainers and you play co-op, you know, like that, I think has potential to be a really intriguing Nintendo. No, I agree. I agree with you, man. Uh, Hockey, you're, you're, you're back in the day, a big Nintendo guy, but which of these two games yeah. did you find the most intriguing and what do you think it needs to have to be a good game? Yeah, so um, I'm going to uh, piggyback on Langelicill, man. I mean, I, like you said, too, uh, Marsman, we were the original 151 Pokemon, you know, uh, Bulbasaur being number one, I think you two being 151. So we're, we're OGs, right? Um, uh, so I don't own a Switch, but the next console I'm going to get probably within the year is going to be a Switch. Um, I watched one of uh, Wait for the friend. Switch Pro. Yeah, I'm gonna bring Switch it out Pro, at some man. point. Telling you, Switch Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's, that's, I think that's the one that I'm gonna get. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the cool thing about the Switch is you can like bring it on an airplane, like it's just straight up just a portable, uh, portable console. Um, and I watched one of my boys who actually plays with us, D Rob. I watched him play uh, Sword and Shield, right? Pokemon Sword and Shield that came out a few years ago, and that game was fire. You know, um, uh, the you know, I think in like Pokemon Go, just throwing the Pokeballs at it. I mean, I was in Japan catching like the most crazy <laughs> thing right that game, you know. But um, yeah, this this game like Sword and Shield, and this game that's coming out, the Scarlet and Violet, I think got a ton of potential. Um, I'm very interested in this. Uh, definitely going to be once I scoop the Switch. Definitely going to be uh, a game I'm going to get. I don't know. Um, again. Is that when is that one coming out? Is that coming That's out? That's coming out this year, November eighteenth. Yeah, out this year. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So hopefully, I'm I'm gonna plan to get the Switch before that comes out. And that's definitely gonna be a game I'm gonna get. Um, the co-op's real cool. Uh, it, it just seems like a, a cool game. Now the Sonic game. Um, again, never really played a Sonic game. I know Sonic though. The movie slapped right with Jim Carrey. Yep. That was a fire movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> Once they changed him back to looking good, you know, not, yeah. not the weird, yeah. Sonic not the game. original, not the not yeah. the weird teeth looking right. one. <laughs> But um, yeah, dude, the, the sound of the game, you know, again, everyone's going over the world, looked dope, sound, the sounds were cool, you know, but yeah, it definitely didn't look like it was coming out like in six months, it's probably going to be like a year and a half or something like that, but that, that looked pretty cool too. You know what? I'm going to go with Sonic. I'm going to give Sonic some due here. I'm, I'm a Mario guy. You're I'm lying. A, I'm more of a Mario guy myself. You know, <laughs> I, I I would pick Mario over Sonic. Mario and the Sonic Olympic Games, I'm picking Mario all, 10, 10, 9, 10 times out of 10, you know, uh, at the end of the day, Sonic is a classic and legendary character, and I honestly think more people are jumping on the Sonic bandwagon because of the success of the movies, and, you know, I think people are itching for a good Sonic game again. I mean, Sonic's fans have a very dedicated ba a bunch. And, yeah, I mean, you know, there was a big Sega. It, Sega it was Mario and Nintendo Sonic, man. They were, battling, yeah. they were battling it, right? They were, were battling over the, the most popular character out there for a while, and Sonic obviously ends up losing because Mario is just too dominant, but Sonic, an open world Sonic game, I think would give Sonic some, you know, popularity back into that game series again. And I honestly think you have a lot of possibility to do some interesting things with an open world Sonic game. If you're adding the characters back, you're giving Sonic something to do because Sonic has that intrigue that it's a platformer like Mario, um, but it's, you know, you can do more with it because of speed and things like that. You can make some really interesting universes that are utilizing gravity, utilizing speed that Mario doesn't really do. Mario is not really a speedster, but you can absolutely yeah, do some stuff with that as well. But Sonic is, gets that intrigue and, you know, similar to Mario has a lot of characters involved. Like Pokemon, you really need to land on doing, having more stuff there to do. And I agree with both of you. Pokemon's a classic series, and I, I am intrigued with Pokemon as well. Um, but w most recent years, some of the Pokemon games have gotten to be too easy, right? And I, uh, me, uh, me myself, I've always been the fan of having a lot of challenge playing Pokemon games. I, I literally thrive on that that intensity that happens when you play in the Pokemon League and you're trying to battle against a champion. Like I thrive on that. But when I heard that recent Pokemon games were like cakewalks you can moonwalk through the game and i was like a little disheartened by it because i was like D this is supposed to be like when you're growing growing up you're playing those original pokemon reds and blues you're like that was one of the most intense battles you would go through as a kid like trying to win right trying to beat you know trying to beat red like you're like trying to beat red in that final showdown with the most unbeatable characters out there i mean 
that's one of the things. But I Pokemon needs to land on that nice, perfect match of difficulty. You can't overpower your main characters too much. You have to find that balance. And you have to have Pokemon that are memorable. I mean, like, over the years, they've lost that touch because there's only so many Pokemon you can make that are that are interesting, right? You're like, yeah. you're like, there have been Pokemon that are just straight up, like, just like, you know, like a book. Like, it's just a Pokemon that's a book. And you're like, <laughs> okay, like, there's a certain point, you know, there's, there's only so much you can do. Um, but Sonic is like, I feel like is an opportunity that they had so many awful Sonic games, awful ones that there's honestly so much room and people probably have so low expectations for Sonic Frontiers that they're like, anything that is a successful open world will make this game super popular. Like Pokemon has that standard that you need to meet or else it's not a good Pokemon game. But that's, that's kind of my thing. I'm looking at both those games, very intriguing. Um, I can't wait to see how Pokemon does. I, I definitely will scoop that game. I'll, I'll definitely scoop it and just become the Pokemon master. I mean, I'm, that's definitely going to happen. Um, I got I to gotta catch them all, you know? So next story on the list here, and this is catch the la- whatever the hell they are. Whatever the hell, it's, whatever the hell it is. We'll catch whatever them. Whatever the hell they're, okay, whatever they're, the hell they're called now, at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's, let's talk with the last major news topic of the week. Xbox is canceling their Fire Stick cloud gaming chip and also known codenamed as keystone so essentially what happened was last year xbox was had announced at e3 that they would be going headfirst into creating technology that will allow for you to play your xbox game pass games on anything on an app on a chip on your television like you just plug it in like a fire stick and you can play with a controller and you're playing your xbox games on a tv without actually owning a console and they already started ramping out that x cloud mechanic if you own game pass ultimate you can technically play on your phones and it, it generally for the most part it has some things that work about it now it was recently shown by Windows Central that states that it's dropping this device because it ha- is having too much difficulty not having lag when it comes to these higher frame rate games, especially when it comes to online play. Um, and I kind of noticed that, uh, you know, I- obviously when you're playing xCloud and I played it before, you're playing an online game that requires you to have good connection and high speeds to match other players. It's going to be difficult. I played Halo Master Chief Collection. Um, I had some kills. I had some decent kills, but damn, I looked like a noob. I looked like I was horrible playing on my phone. Um, and this is a, this was an iPhone 12 Pro at the time. It wasn't like playing because it was a horrible phone. It's because you're playing with a connection rather than playing with a hard drive disk or anything like that. That really just allows for the GPU to really process everything fast. And you need to have really good online connections to really make it work. I think games that are strategy games, things that are like turn-based, that are just like a little bit at a time would be perfect for this. But I even tried playing Sea of Thieves on my phone, and you all know the the amount of step by step process for you to like. I need to turn the boat. I gotta lower the sails. I gotta put the thing. Just imagine doing that on the laggy phone, and boy, that was that stress. Um, I tried it just for a little bit to see how it was, and I was like, dude, I I can't I can't handle this without like just being miserable. So I can understand the difficulty of this X Cloud device. Um, now the question I have for you guys is. Do you think Xbox should continue investing heavily into cloud gaming because maybe people are drifting more into that? Or do you think they should make a mobile device meant for gaming on the go? Like, very similar to the uh, to the Steam Deck that just released la- almost last year. It's in the first year of its of its release. A lot of people are liking it. Um, do you think- If you that, can get it. If you can get it. I, I pre-ordered, I reserved mine. I'm still waiting for the time to purchase it. Um, but- it, if do you think they should keep investing in this in this wireless cloud gaming or do you think they should make a mobile device that's meant solely for that purpose to compete with the steam deck and the nintendo switch and i'll start with angelic hill here what do you think do you think they should keep investing in this or do you think they maybe should just invest in a, in a mobile device meant for this um before getting off topic i remember people screaming their heads off and some rightfully so about PS5 and, and the new Xbox console about getting their hands on one. Getting your hands on a Steam Deck is becoming almost near impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do find that funny. It doesn't nearly get as much criticism as as uh, Sony and Microsoft did uh, upon their release. But going back to that question, I'm actually, you know, I l- liked the idea at the time that Microsoft said it, but 
it's almost like your eyes are too big for your stomach. Um, developing the technology is proven to be extremely difficult. Um, and unless they're playing, like you said, a strategy game or a single person campaign, um, no way people are going to choose to use that, uh, that method. Uh, because in a competitive environment, uh, the difference between half a second is huge and you're going to lose that fight especially in competitive shooters or competitive fighter games. Um, so again, I, I feel that if they can make that technology, you have to scrap it, but I actually am not part of the make a mobile device. I think it would be something similar to PSP if Microsoft tried to invest in that. And although PSP had success, um, it didn't have enough success to keep it for the long haul because it's hard to compete with Nintendo's uh, mobile devices. Um, Nintendo does a tremendous job of creating those mobile devices and now a new competitor who actually could compete with this steam deck you'd be going up against microsoft i uh, going up against steam deck and nintendo for mobile devices and i just feel that although microsoft has plenty of money that is a losing battle i don't think it's worth it to be honest i do think you know finding a way to get microsoft games on steam and getting the vast majority of microsoft games on steam uh would be the route to go um, if they, you know, that's a way that they can keep infiltrating their market, which you can already play on your computer through Game Pass. But if they want to really infiltrate mobile devices, I would probably cut a deal uh, to get it on the Steam Deck. So, Aki, what do you think? Should they keep investing in this cloud gaming or make a mobile device? Make an Xbox, uh, Xbox Mini. What do you think? Yeah, so, I mean, what Frank just said was very smart. Um, Eric Langella, Hill, right? So, I, I think you cut a deal with steam would probably be the the easy way out um the hard the hard way would be to try to either a keep going for the the cloud gaming or b try to make a xbox you know equivalent of the psp how good that's going to be um i'm not sure again they're a billion dollar company so they should be able to put something out right um but i mean for multiplayer games, it's, it's obviously proven to be hard. Any type of story mode game, I don't see a problem with, uh, you know, a mini little Xbox in your hand, you know. Um, now explain to, uh, I know you've explained this to me, but how much of the users, what is uh, like a backbone? Is that like the backbone that you put your phone in? Does that yeah. have anything to do with any of this? Or is that so, just- like So you're thinking like the, the, the issue when it comes to the, to the controller, like maybe that's why it could yeah. be lagging stuff? It could be. I mean, like, because technically, the way I have it, I can't, I can't find it at the moment. Like, it's like it's not right next to me. But basically, yeah, yeah. it's a thing that plugs into your phone. Like, there's a little spot it plugs right into it, and technically, it registers that it's a controller. Like, because technically, you could control, could, could connect an Xbox controller to your phone if you want and play games <laughs> right on it. You could, but I don't think it's necessarily the controller as the problem. It's really just the connection from your phone. To the game pass servers that is then streaming the the game to your phone and now you're matching that the speeds of the internet to the servers to your actions and connecting to everything on an online service that is just more difficult i think playing a game story based or even slow paced like a strategy game makes more sense because not a lot's happening it's just turn by turn like i if they, like obviously if they had like or even a low level like story game like tunic if you're playing like a tunic on your phone like tunics like it looks it looks like a classic legend of zelda type of like three over the top world and it's like a cartoon like you're playing that type of game you're playing like uh cuphead like on your phone like that makes sense because it's not crazy it's not it's not intense and you're not playing online against people you're just playing locally and i think that would make more sense um me me personally and i agree with both of you guys i think investing in steam deck would be the smartest thing making sure your biggest games like halo infinite currently on steam deck is not, not playable because there's a lot of anti-cheat software that Steam has in place that Halo would not match. And they need to make sure that they are cohesive because they did say that you could download Game Pass onto your Steam Deck and play Game Pass games right on it, which would be great. They, but they should have it more intertwined, make it more streamlined. So it's instead of you doing extra processes to get the access to your games, just have it already embedded as an app on Steam that you could then just download, play your games right on there. That would make life so much easier because that was one of the first things I thought of when I saw a Steam Deck. I was like, yo, Halo on the go? I'm download I'm getting that thing right away and I can play this stuff anytime I want in my house. 
or anywhere that has Wi-Fi. That'd be that'd be insane. Um, but that's one of the issues. Now, I before we close out and go to the Discord questions, the other thing I would say is that Microsoft just learned from the past. I mean, you mentioned hockey, you mentioned a really good point. PSP. Big Sony could not develop uh, they had PSP, which I have, I still have here. Great console, loved it, played so much of it. It was honestly it was me playing PSP, playing the uh, 3DS and other game uh, handhelds for a long time. Um, they had the PS Vita, that failed, right? And honestly, they just couldn't compete with Nintendo's my, uh, handheld devices. And with phones coming out and being more having more games on your phone now, like you're not diving into that market is so difficult. Nintendo's had almost a monopoly on it for such a long time, and Steam is doing a solid job of creating a device that can do a lot of things, but it's still expensive like it like the highest level steam console that has like 512 gigabytes of storage is like 650 bucks right that's a lot that's more than an xbox series x and ps5 right and that's a handheld console so you know like that's that's the thing like and the other competitors other than that are like a thousand bucks you know what i mean like that so switch is like holding the market any way they want 300 dollars for a switch console the only downside for Switch is you can't play higher level games. You're playing Nintendo yeah. games that are not higher depth. They're just basic fun games, but they're just not crazy. Like if Steam Deck was cheaper, it would really give Nintendo a run for its money. Because if it was like 300 bucks for a really good like gigabytes, that would be insane. Like that would be just out of, out of this world. Um, but uh, making a console that's that's going to compete with those two, it's, I don't think it's smart. All right, so listen, we're going to jump to the Discord questions. A lot of these questions are, I mean, all of them are all sent to us by our Discord followers, people who subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media, the Mars Man crew. And I try to invest or try to bring in as many questions as I can. But based on time constraints, I have a limited number that I can do just because if there's a lot of news topics of the week, I I don't want to miss out on those. I will add more questions next week depending on which ones we get daily. So if you want to submit questions to us, you definitely just make sure you drop a thumbs up, subscribe, and join us on Discord. And that's located and it could be all gaming, movie, shows. Yeah, it could be any any questions that are that we, you want. <laughs> any questions you want the Mars Man crew to answer, and we will try to do that as best as possible. So let's dive right in. So first question, um, this is more towards me. Where did the name Mars Man come from? And honestly, this is a lot of people always kind of miscue this you know first things they always think of is oh you're talking about mars man like like a, like a guy a martian a guy from mars the planet technically no it's actually i branch off from my my nickname my name as a whole my nickname throughout my entire life basically was mars people just called me mars short former cilio and i kind of just carried along with that and that was the first gamer tag name i had when making my 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 entrance onto Xbox 360. Now, I was playing Xbox way before that, and we actually shared the Langella Kill name, me and my brother, and we you know we we started we started that together, and then crazy story, Gears of War comes out. I thought, hey, I needed to have an account to play split screen, even though I was dumb and you could have played with a guest anyway. Created a brand new name. That name was not Mars Man, it was Let's Go Jets 55. Every game we tried to join, I got booted because I was a Jets fan, and now I had to change it to Mars Man, and here we are, everyone. Mars Man Gaming is born. True story. Mars True Man story. Gaming is born, and that's where we are now. Um, so second question, this one's pretty pretty easy as well. How does the Mars Man crew know each other? We're all related. Um, we are, <laughs> we're, all, we're all related. I knew, we had no choice. We had no choice. We're all, we're all crew members together. Langella Kill is my brother and Haki is my cousin. We're all related. We're all part of the same clan. So, you know, uh, that's how we all know each other. We've been gaming with each other since we were kids, just uh, since I can remember. And that obviously just builds that bond closer and closer. We've been playing games, same games, had the same type of mindsets for a long time. Uh, different opinions on games, but we share the same common interests when it comes to just gaming and just having fun. So that's how the Mars Man crew was started. That's how it was born. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, a story made for movies. So let's jump to the last question here. And this is for all the Mars Man crew. What is the most entertaining game for you guys right now? And um, right now, there's <laughs> not there's not a lot of games to pick from. Damn. But it's a great question because that is something that a lot of people struggle with. What is the most entertaining game? I mean, listen, I, I, I me, myself, I play a lot of Halo Infinite because I'm a big Halo fan. I like that. I like the multiplayer. I like playing it. it 
just progressing through the battle pass and join the maps seeing the updates i like playing halo infinite right now um me myself i play halo infinite more than i do elden ring at the moment but elden ring is probably the other most most entertaining game because there's so much to do but halo infinite for me is probably the most entertaining because i can just keep playing i, I just love halo and halo infinite is close to a classic era style so for me i could just keep going like i get less angry playing halo infinite than i did halo 5 and halo 4 so I feel like for me, I can just keep playing Halo Infinite as much as I want, and I enjoy it. So I, I, I meandered myself. Halo Infinite's the most entertaining, but if it's not Halo Infinite, I'm playing Elden. Um, let's go hockey. I think we all know here which game you find the most entertaining. But hockey, what game is your most entertaining one? Level 188. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's it's Elden Ring right now. Um, again, I'm, I mean. Two games I've been playing, Elden Ring uh, and Halo Infinite, and I actually hopped back on Forza because I was... Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I sold a really cool... I sold a Corvette this week, like one of those new mid-engine Corvettes, so I had to hop on Forza Horizon because I couldn't drive the one in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I drove it in Forza Horizon. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Elden Ring's... Uh, Elden Ring's got me by the balls, we'll say. I'm not trying to be inappropriate, but <laughs> uh, I would go with... I would go with Elden Ring right now, but Halo Infinite still still up there. So Angelico, I think I kind of know your answer well, but what is the most entertaining game that you're playing? I mean, there's been entertaining games this year. Um, you know, when you talk about Horizon, you talk about Forza, you talk about Infinite. Um, but the most entertaining, and I agree with Aki, which has taken me and his his most hours. Um, is Elden Ring, uh, and it's just because they're the, the vast world, playing with each other, and even the lore is very interesting. I know uh, I would love a different style on how they tell the story um, to be a little bit more intrusive, um, but when you learn the story, it's actually intriguing to me, um, and learning kind of the lore of the characters. So there's just so much to it that brings that entertainment. Um, but I am also looking forward to games, maybe even some surprising games as the year goes along that kind of takes my attention away from Elden Ring. Um, although I loved it and I'm going to beat it um, to completion, as far as completion as I can. But I, I'm, I'm hoping that the gaming industry gives us more games that we can grab our attention. Um, that it's not just Halo and uh, Elden Ring. No, I agree. Listen, I, I, I am a, a fan of all games. Obviously, I try to play as much genres as I can. One game I'm really looking forward to playing, and I'm, maybe I'm just isolated here. Mario Strikers is coming out, guys. You know, Mario Soccer is coming back. It's been more than a decade since this game well, I'm has nervous. returned. I'm nervous I, about that. I, one, I'm a little nervous, but I have been a Mario Strikers fan since the GameCube days. And I've been, you know, just, just kicking butt in that game for decades. I've been looking forward to a new installment on the Switch for so long. I want another strike. I have the Strikers game coming out soon. There's a demo coming out this weekend. I might, I'm going to jump on that thing as soon as possible. Mario Baseball needs to come out sooner or later because that game was another one I used to play for hours. Like, you got to come out with these games. But I'm excited to play some Mario Strikers, man. I, I've been itching for that that release. And I when I saw the demo, they're having a demo, limited time demo this weekend. I'm like, dude, I'm jumping on that thing and I'm making the best squad possible. And I'm going to win every title possible. Um, and now, Mario like, Strikers should be having a Mario Baseball or like a Smash Brothers type roster. Yeah, they should and be having, massive, having 10 players. That's massive BS. roster, man. You got to be having a lot of care. Mario Baseball uh, for the Wii, uh, Mario Baseball Sluggers. I had like literally like yeah. close to 30 people like you, you should be yeah. having 30 people like maybe have captains 10 captains and then pick like 20 25 or 20 other characters side characters that have their own traits and you can mix and match now granted they said they're going to add more people as time progresses yeah well i would hope so i mean that's like what are you going to do with the game just have 10 people that's it just walk away yeah. no you want to add more but damn like that game needed to come out and it, I just don't want to see Nintendo drift into the live service too, because that, yeah. that, that's what it sounds like. It sounded like a live service. It sounded like something that Chris Lee told me with Halo Infinite. Like, yeah, there's going to be like five maps and we'll just drop two every every five months. Like, no, like, no, you, 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 let's bring out the people. Let's bring out the characters. Let's do this. So, so Myra Striker is going to be a game I'm excited for. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out. But I think Myra Strikers right now is the game I'm looking forward to recently. I'll be really entertained playing that one. Uh, probably do an online franchise and try to be the number one soccer player out there. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff playing. But I really appreciate the questions, guys. 
If you want to submit a question, like I said before, make sure you drop a subscribe to us and join us on Discord. And that's located in the description below. Be part of the Mars Band crew. We're trying to build our Discord up. We're trying to get more people involved, talking gaming, talking fun stuff. Like I said, you can send us questions about anything, whether movies, TV shows, games, all that stuff. So please make sure you submit those questions to us. But any last words, guys, before we close out the show? No, another good week. Another good week, yeah. man. Another good week. Another yeah. good one. Listen, like I said, we couldn't get to talk much about the uh, uh, PlayStation State of Play. I'm going to have my own reaction video, and we'll probably reference some news stories in next week's video because it just dropped today. We're recording uh, the same day it came out, so we couldn't get to prepare for everything. But I'm going to make my own my own little uh, reaction video very shortly about it. Um, but thank you guys for watching, and please make sure to drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Like I said, guys, we thrive on your support. And we really appreciate everyone coming out to watch our, our videos as well as our live streams. And we will be streaming a lot more consistently, especially with the summer coming around. And we will be having a lot more fun with brand new games uh, joining the fray. So thank you guys for watching. This is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off for the night. Peace.